Hey, it's Chris Chico, and today I want to talk to you about banded signs and how I hate banded signs. And I don't think that you should be using banded signs in your real estate business. And if you're starting out trying to become a real estate investor, I want to share with you why I think it's a really bad idea for you to use banded signs because you might be thinking, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find me some deals using some banded signs. In the end, you're going to end up spinning your wheels. You're going to end up possibly losing money because you're going to get the city that's going to find you and they're gonna hunt for you down because they don't like those banded signs, you're not gonna be able to scale with it. You're gonna to have to end up doing something else anyway, so why not start with that something else? So let's cover though the reasons why. Oh, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna to reveal to you my digital banded sign technique, which is how you can take the same concept of a banded sign that you would normally put out on the street, and we can go out and put them in all the di different neighborhoods that you're looking to find properties in. However, we can do it online. So now you don't have to take and put a whole bunch of bandit signs in the trunk of your car or run around all over town like a lunatic. You can actually do it from your computer screen. I wanna show you how to do that. But first, let's go ahead and take a little bit of a field trip. And uh, before I do that, look. I'm gonna die right now. And uh, my mother-in-law made black beans. She makes the best black beans. So I think I'm gonna have to break the diet. Only my second day in. So I want to show you a couple of things here on the street. So we're going to go out and uh, do a little field trip here. I'm taking my phone with me. I have a big camera, but I can't take that camera anywhere I go because I could be somewhere and start filming. All of a sudden they come to me and they say, oh, I'm so sorry, sir. We don't allow filming here, but I could take my phone and be somewhere and nobody thinks twice about it. So the phone is the best. Hey, by the way, before I forget, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. There's a little notification bell right by the subscribe button. Make sure you click on that. And that way, when I publish a new video, you can be notified right away and you're not gonna miss any of the goodness that I bring to you. All right, so let me show you something. All right, see this neighborhood here? In this area right here. Let me just pan out. I ain't gonna find any bandit signs here. Why? Because it's too nice of an area. No bandit signs here. I gotta drive. Not to mention that code enforcement and the police will be all over your butt if you were to put bandit signs here. I saw a police officer the other day and he was, uh, I saw a bunch of bandit signs here. Somebody was aggressive enough or I don't know, <laughs> crazy enough to put them up here. And uh, I saw the police officer and I said to the police officer, I said, uh, I may believe like I was just a normal guy. I'm like, man, this guy, whoever put these out, uh, spent a lot of time uh, doing that. And, I, like, and the guy, the police officer was pissed. He was like, man, I hate these things. They, uh, they make the neighborhood look horrible, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, man, I, I feel you, man. Those people are horrible. And then I just went away. I didn't say anything to him. So again, I am here in this neighborhood. This guy just saw me in the front porch looking at me taking a video uh, right there. It's always interesting when you're out in a particular area and then people just like, if you start taking photos and they get a little bit uh, uncomfortable. So no bandit signs there. It's still too nice of an area. So we have to go further in to the, um, I don't know what you call it. What kind of neighborhood would you call that? Or a little bit deeper into the different neighborhoods to try to get if we can find an abandoned sign. Wait a second, I see one right there. I don't want to zoom in too much because then you I don't want you to call that one, but it's a little tiny little bit of a sign. I found one over there, right there. Oh, we buy houses fast, cash, easy. That's interesting. They have a website on there. I like the domain, women buy houses too something like that well, that's interesting that they put the domain there interesting domain right so i'm not condoning that you do this hopefully you can hear me lots of wind here but you can tell this one here it's a pretty good placement of one right here right up on the pole that's been there for a while but again you can see the neighborhood it's a little bit different different than the first neighborhood that we went to so as you noticed uh, the bandit signs are located in progressively, progressively, ah, progressively, progressively less kept up neighborhoods. Jeez, that took a while. So let's talk about the first reason why I think putting out bandit signs is a bad idea. And uh, 
the reason for that is because in most municipalities, in most cities, it's illegal to put up bandit signs. In the area that we were in that was a little bit better, uh, that one, if you put out any sort of bandit signs, they will be on you like white on rice. Uh, the code people, the police will take them down. Uh, it's just, you're going to get into trouble. So it's not even worth your time. So now you have to go into different areas. And in, in the area here that we're at, um, there the police and the code enforcement, it's a small city. So you're not gonna get that much of a bother, but it's still a nuisance. It's still like considered if they catch you, then they might find you every so often. They might have a big push to get rid of signs and they might try and find you, right? So also in, in some of these areas, it's a misdemeanor to put these things out. And I've heard of investors like being fined per each individual sign that you put out, you're gonna get fined. So it's just not, I don't like the dealing with strategies that I have to contend with and or consider uh, repercussions with the law. So the second reason why I think putting out signs is a bad idea is because of scalability. If you wanna put out five or 10 signs, you're not gonna do much. You gotta put out like 100, 200, 300 signs. And so now you've got to work with the logistics of driving around all over time with these things in your trunk and not getting killed and putting them out in all the different neighborhoods so you have that now let's say that you are able to find deals using that method so what do you got to do next now you have to think about am i going to hire somebody or i'm going to hire a crew and uh many investors have told me they've hired someone they gave them all the signs they gave them all the money to go ahead and put them out and then what they end up doing is they end up keeping the money and then throw, throwing away the signs. And so now, now you're worse off because now you got no signs, you've given money and you got no leads. So it's like, okay, that didn't work out too well. So how do you scale that? I mean, if you're going to do even direct mail, Facebook ads or cold calling, it's a lot easier to scale those tactics versus the fact that you have to deal with signs and human element. So for me, that's another negative against bandit signs. All right, here's the next challenge that I have with the bandit signs is the cat and mouse game that you have to play. Because let's say that you say, Chico, I'm okay. I'm okay with dealing with code enforcement and all that other stuff. I'm okay, I don't care about the law. Take me to jail, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna put my signs out. And let's say that you don't have an issue with either you putting out the signs or hiring other people. Now you've got a cat and mouse game because you've got to put out the signs typically during the weekend because if you put them out during the week, then code enforcement and or everybody else, they're going to try to knock them down and get rid of them. So you got to do it on the weekend when there's no code enforcement, they're all home. So you put them out and then you then will hopefully get some calls during the weekend and little by little then they start to wane down because by the time the middle of the week runs, uh, then there are no more signs because everybody's taking them down. So that's a challenge. So, and also uh, nowadays other investors are actually your worst enemy because they'll take and they'll take your signs down. They will go in and I've seen them cut the phone numbers off the signs. They'll take them down. They'll take their sign and put it on top of your sign. And so now you've got that, con that to contend with. Another problem. Let's talk about another reason why I don't like bandit signs. It's impossible to do virtual wholesaling with bandit signs. You could argue, Chico, I can find a crew in my local area to go out and put up the signs. Yes, you could do that, but it's it's horrible way to do business. It's hard enough to get the crews to put them out in your local area. However, to get them to go into an area to find However, to find people in another area that you have absolutely no clue about, you don't know the, the locations of the intersections where you want to put the signs out or anything like that, it's just horrible. So if that's your strategy, now you're stuck in your local market. You're stuck in that geographic region because you know, you're limited by the, because of the fact that you have the physical nature of schlepping around sounds like a clown all over town. So that's another reason. Finally, it's a temporary thing, meaning that you're going to do it. You're going to have some results with it, potentially, maybe, if you don't get fined or encounter any of, any of the other issues that I mentioned. But eventually, you're going to be at a position where you're going to say, look, I want to grow my real estate business. i got to figure out a way to generate leads. So now you're going to go into direct mail. You're going to go into cold calling. You're going to go into Facebook ads like I teach. 
But now you have to start brand new learning that particular strategy and how to implement it properly and everything else associated with it, which now, you know, I, I would I would argue that why not have started in that other avenue in order to find deals, in order to find yourself viable opportunities. So then now a few months later, you've gotten better at that particular way of finding deals. And now you're in a position where you can scale it versus this thing with the bandit signs that in the end, it was a dead end because yes, it may have made you some money, hopefully if you didn't get into any sort of trouble, uh, but at the end, now you're stuck. So that's the reason why I don't think that bandit signs are a good way for you to generate leads. So check this out in the middle of this particular area where you have all these older homes. Of course, you find this brand new townhouse development just smack in the middle of nowhere. Very nice. Very nice. Wow. See that house there? That would be a great house for driving for dollars because it has a blue tarp or maybe because in Florida, you see a lot of blue tarps because people had had issues with the hurricane and never really fixed their roofs. So sometimes those blue tarps, they last for a very long time here in South Florida. So those are the reasons why I think you should not be doing bandit signs at all as a real estate investor, uh, even if you're just starting out and don't have a whole ton of money. I recommend using my digital bandit sign technique, which is where we are going to use Facebook ads and run small little ads in all of the zip codes that you would normally drive all over time and put these signs on the regular bandit signs. And instead you're going to create these small little ads that appear on Facebook and then are going to have people see them and they're going to raise their hands and they're going to say, you know what? I am interested in selling my house. And it's interesting because when we put these ads on Facebook, sometimes people think that it's a picture that we took of their neighborhood with the sign on top. That's because it, it looks so real. So I'm going to show you exactly how that works. So somewhere here, you're going to see some videos pop up of a training that I have on here on YouTube on how to find motivated sellers using Facebook ads and using my digital bandit sign technique. So make sure that you go ahead and you click on one of these videos and that way you can see exactly how you can do the bandit signs, but do it in a whole new different way.